There's one main important thing that I've noticed here. The original doorbell 2 that I had, you've got these two connections here, and that's when you hardwire it. To get the battery out, you would normally undo this cover, pull the little tab, and there's your battery. The new one, I'm looking at trying to take this cover off, Rob, and I realise actually you're not supposed to. Ring actually say that if your doorbell gets stolen, they'll replace it free of charge. And that's now your resistor for your ring doorbell, wired in series, and it'll give it protection if there's any surge. <laughs> Thank you, Mr. Prime. Here's my ring doorbell. What's in the box? Ring camera. And I've also got some of these little things. These are resistors. And they're gonna hopefully give me a bit of protection to the circuit. They're a little inline resistor. And the idea is that you use these when you're using a hardwire adapter for your ring camera. Now I've already got the hardwire adapter and you just wire these in series, piece of cake. I had to get a new ring camera because my other one started to play up and it wasn't actually charging. Um, the battery worked, but the camera, maybe it had a surge, I don't know. Nevertheless, I phoned up Ring and I said to them I wasn't too happy. I've only had the camera for about three years. They gave me a discount and because of Black Friday, which is today, I ended up getting this camera, which is the same one I had before, which is the Ring Doorbell 2, for about 30, 37 pounds. That's about 45 US. So pretty happy really. So let's get it on the wall. I'm gonna use the original bracket. I'm gonna put my um, resistor in line so that it will keep it from getting any power surges. Enough talk, let's get into it. Decided to go for the dark color because I've got a dark wall. And I like the idea that at first I wanted it to stand out, but actually, this little round circle here, when it illuminates, this will come on when it's hardwired. It normally only illuminates when you press the button when it's on battery, but when you've got it connected and it's charging, that's how you know there's a hardwired system when that little white circle there is uh, always on. At the back here, you've got your two connections, and all I'm going to do is wire this resistor from my power supply, which is um, up to 24 volts AC, and it's just going to be in line to the connection there. Pretty straightforward. Comes with a little tool kit and the charger here, which is for the battery. So it's peeled off the bottom here. Oh, fresh. And uh, oh, we've got two screws. I had one screw before. That's good. Actually, it's nice. It's got like a, a sort of a brushed aluminium finish not quite as sort of plasticky looking as my original. That's the backing plate there. This one you obviously mount on the wall and this one you connect to it. You can get different adapters and I'll show you what I've done on my, on my doorbell. It certainly looks to be built a little bit more stable than my original. So here's my old one. This is the second generation. I bought this about three years ago. This is also the second generation. I bought this about three days ago. In all sense and purposes, they look pretty similar, but there are differences, and I thought it was just gonna be plug and play. Actually, it's not. First of all, if you look at the width on the second generation, this is the new one I've just bought, you can see actually it's a fair bit slimmer. Height-wise, they're about the same. And width-wise, they're pretty much, pretty much the same. There's one main important thing that I've noticed here. So on the original doorbell 2 that I had, you've got these two connections here, and that's for when you hardwire it. And this is where I bought this resistor here to wire it in series, so I give it some protection. Now to get the battery out, you would normally undo this cover, like so, pull the little tab, and there's your battery. And then on the battery, you then use your charger to connect in, and there's lights on the battery that would charge up. So that's the one that I had originally. However, 
The new one, I'm looking at trying to take this cover off and I can't find out how to take the cover off and I realize actually you're not supposed to. If you look at the back here, there's your charging port. You still got the two connections for your AC up to 24 volts hardwired connection. And there's your reset button by the looks of it there in, in orange. So I started thinking, actually, do you need a transformer? And would you need one of these? Because you could actually just connect a charger into it full time and, and run it in that way. Um, maybe they thought about it, but it's certainly a more sealed unit. So when you put this on the wall, the bracket that you get, and here it is here, it actually is designed, this will stay on the wall, but it's designed just to hook in. And then I guess if you didn't have it hardwired and charged, you need to recharge it. You have to take the whole doorbell away and go and charge it. But security wise, the two screws that you would have at the bottom. So when this is on the wall, you put your two screws here and that will prevent people taking it. Ring actually say that if your doorbell gets stolen, they'll replace it free of charge. That's one of their policies. So we'll see how we go. I was hoping to use the existing bracket that I've got on my door, but I don't think I will now. I'm gonna to have to try and modify it. I live on a hill, so I'm gonna to have to point it down slightly, but let's see what happens. It's got like a little torx on the end now. They've obviously changed the security. That was just a little Phillips before. Charger and some lovely stickers so that you can warn everybody that your doorbell's recording. So let's install it. So importantly, these screws that you get with the kit, they need to be flush when they're mounted, otherwise your doorbell is gonna protrude. So they've gotta be nice and flush. So all I'm gonna do, I'm gonna use the existing bracket. And as it's plastic, I can just screw into it just by self-tapping. Should be enough material behind it to allow me to do that. Pretty good. Bring my wires through. I'm going to put the resistor at the plug end in the dry, so not a lot of space in here, and there's no need to be there. I can just do it at the other end. Right, so I'm going to put the one with the dotted line on the right. No particular reason. Just, just so I know. If you put it in the direction that you're going to tighten the screw, it will twist on better as well. So you're turning it to the right, so you want the wire to be on the left. So when you turn it, it doesn't come away. Okay, that's all secure. That's it. Oh, it's come to life. That's interesting. I think I've put it on the wall and as I've pushed it in, I think I've pushed that little orange button and it's in setup mode now. Let's peel it off. Oof. It's brand spanking new. So, anything left to do now, a couple of the security screws. I'm gonna set it up, I'll show you how you hardwire it next with that little resistor. I've got the white one because it will match the, uh, the paintwork. The input is 240. In the UK, we have 220 to 240 volts AC, a 50 hertz frequency. Importantly, the output is 24 volts AC and 500 milliamps and that's what you need to power your doorbell so by plugging this in to the back of the ring doorbell that i've got what it's going to do is actually give you a uh, led light that will be always on and when you see ring doorbells with that led light it shows that it's a hardwired system and it charges the internal battery so you never have to take the battery out you never have to put the charge on and you'll always have uh, video being recorded which is part of the whole security feature why would you want it to run out if you look at the two wires there one's got a dash line the other one doesn't 
All right, so here's my transformer. This goes to the doorbell, obviously, outside. And all I'm going to do is, I've made a connection here, just because I've had to replace this once before. And instead of having to put a new cable all the way through the trunking, I just made a joint here. It's a far lot easier. So let's undo it here. And then I'm going to put the resistor somewhere, somewhere neatly on the side there. And all I'm going to do is I'm just going to crimp it. I've got these little spade connectors like this. You could just wrap the wire around through the tiny little hole or solder it. Um, but for simplicity, I'm just going to use these little connectors, put them on the cable, put it in series, and that's it. So on the other end of this cable here, if you remember, I mentioned about having one of the wires with a dotted line, and that's this one here on my right. So I'm going to connect the resistor on that for no reason, but just to keep it more consistent, that's all. So I'll put the resistor somewhere neatly on the line. Somewhere about here and just run it in series, just like that. So what I like to do is see how much cable you're going to need. You're not going to need a lot. You can run it to there. So let's snip it there. quick pull that's good the wire is a little bit thin so I'm just doubling this over make sure you can see it come through the other side Okay, good. Put that one on there. There's no particular direction to this. Right. And that's now your resistor for your ring doorbell, wired in series, and it will give it protection if there's any surge or difference in voltage. This is just the standard 220 to 240 volts AC in the UK, 50 hertz frequency, and the output is 24 volts. All right, let's get it set up with the software on the phone. So let's go into Ring. We now want to look for the new doorbell. So here's my existing doorbell. You can see on the 19th of the 11th, it stopped working. So we need to remove that. Let's go into devices. And we've got front door here offline. These are the other cameras I've got. I've got three other floodlight cameras, but this one is offline. Device settings, remove device. So let's go into that. And you've got options here. You've got delete events or you've got keep events. So I'm going to keep events. Why not? and I'm going to deactivate the device. Success, you've deactivated this device. So that's my old ring doorbell now gone. Press OK. So that's now been deactivated. But I can still see the past events if I want to by scrolling along here. Right, so let's go and add a new device. So we're going to go to set up new device. It's a doorbell. And we can scan the code which came with the item on the box. Aha, uh -huh, I found it. And we continue. It's a front door, so select that. And I have read and done and installed, so press OK there. Got the two security screws. I found those, and that is done. I've removed the protective film. And we need to set up the Wi-Fi. So let's do that. Press continue. 
and the light is spinning. Let's go and check that. Okay. Light is spinning white. Ring doorbells prepare pairing for setup. Let's go over to the doorbell and see what we can see. When prompted, connect it to the Ring Wi-Fi network. Okay, so let's go OK. I'm going to go and tie into my Wi-Fi now on the phone. I'm going to Ring Setup 58's come up, so let's select that. Obtaining IP address, connected. Okay, good. Now let's go back to the app. And press OK. It says connecting to your doorbell. Now connected to the Ring app. We're now connected to the app, as she says. We want to search all the networks and choose the networks that best. Press continue. Wi Fi. Just a moment. OK, now connecting to Wi Fi. Press OK. I've got the And success is now all set up. So let's press continue. I can now see all my devices and I can set up the perimeter on the phone. So this will then give me the boundaries so that it won't go off by areas that I don't want it to go off on, like passing cars, etc. So importantly, here there's a white ring which is illuminated, and this is how you can tell your ring doorbell is hardwired because this illuminates and will stay illuminated all the time. It will obviously go blue when people press the button etc but at night time this is a good deterrent. This people know that this is the ring doorbell and that it's hardwired. And there's my little label. Let's move on, cause it's time to move.